gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Picking stones, man is made of dreams and bones. Feel the need to grow my own, cause the time is close at hand. Grain for grain, sun and rain, find my way in nature's chain. Tune my body and my brain to the music from the land. and strong, temper them with prayer and song. Mother Earth will make you strong if you give her love and care. Old crow watch a really from his perch in yonder tree. In my garden I'm as free as a feather thief of Someone warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Good morning, church. We are the Ludkey family. I'm Andy. I'm Rory. I'm Olivia. I'm Dan. We worship here at Aldersgate United Methodist Church. Worship with us in God's love. All are welcome here, and all means all. Come, let us worship. Please join us in the call to worship, praying together. We, we come, come from, from different, different places, places with, with different, different skills and abilities and, abilities and, and different, different occupations. occupations. We, we come, come to, to the, the same place to share our skills and abilities and worship together. Let us gather together to worship God. Continuing together in prayer, let us pray. God, who brings us together and builds us together, be with us as we listen to your word and sing songs of praise and pray. Amen.
Hi friends, it's Miss Jen for Children's Time. Did you know that we have 206 bones in our bodies? The tiniest bone is the stapes bone. It's a bone found in the middle ear. It is three millimeters long, or that's like 0.1 inch. And it weighs three milligrams or one one thousandth of an ounce. That is one tiny bone. But without that tiny little bone, our hearing is impaired. So while being tiny and only one of 206 bones in our body, it is super important. In Ephesians 4.16, we are called to be the body of Christ in love. What are some ways that we can do that? Remember that the small things we contribute can still be extremely important. Will you pray with me? Thank you, God, for strong bones and our amazing bodies. Help us grow together, work together to be the body of Christ. Remind us all parts of the body are important and should be celebrated. Amen. Bye, friends. Good morning. We are the Lowe's. I am Livona. And I am Daryl. We bring the good news of Jesus Christ. Draw near and hear the word of God. Told Ephesians in chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. We are reading from the Inclusive Bible. I plead with you then, in the name of our Redeemer, to lead a life worthy of your calling. Treat one another charitably in complete selflessness, gentleness, and patience. Do all you can to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the peace that binds you together. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called into one hope when you were called. There is one Savior, one faith, one baptism, one God and creator of all, who is over all, who works through all and within all. Each of us has received God's grace in the measure in which Christ has bestowed it. Thus you find the scripture saying, you ascended on high, leading captives in your train and giving gifts to the people. You ascended. What does this mean but that Christ first descended into the lower regions of the earth? The one who descended is the very one who ascended high above the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. And to some, the gift they were given is that they should be apostles, to some prophets, to some evangelists, to some pastors and teachers. These gifts were given to equip fully the Holy Ones for the work of service and to build up the body of Christ until we attain unity in our faith and in our knowledge of the only begotten of God, until we become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Let us then be children no longer, tossed here and there, carried about by every whim of doctrine, or by human trickery or crafty, deceitful schemes. Rather, let us speak the truth in love and grow to the full maturity of Christ the head. Through Christ, the whole body grows with the proper functioning of each member, firmly joined together by each supporting ligament. The body builds itself up in love. The word okay. of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Tomorrow I will be flying out to LA to be with and visit my mom. She is at 81 years old and with kidney failure, not very mobile now. She depends on others for her meals, unable to cook for herself. Her legs have lost much of her muscle strength. She no longer looks like she used to at 145 pounds with big shoulders, now weighing only 95 pounds at about 5 foot 4 inches.
her body being eaten away by diabetes. We are visiting my mom to be present with her, as well as to offer my younger brother a break so that he could get some rest and some nourishment for his spirit and soul. Rest and food for him means hiking in the mountains of the Sierra Nevada mountains ranges, where he will be backpacking for the week, communing with the stars and moons, and measuring time by sunrises and sunsets. He will be fed, spending time apart by beauty and by mystery. I won't be climbing any peaks over 10,000 feet like him this coming week. Still, my brother's spirit of patience, gentleness, and bearing my mom's weight with love will encourage me to be present with a deeper and transforming kind of love that is needed for this present moment with her. If it is out of my comfort zone, I am the first woman pastor from whom my mom ever received the sacrament of Holy Communion, and so she would like to call me her pastor, which creates both different boundaries as well as different kinds of intimacy. I'm also her child, her daughter. The challenge is more on my side, as it's much easier for me when it was my mom who used to prepare my food and set a table and feed me. It's interesting how we are always growing up and how our parents are in many ways continuing to parent us, even in the midst of the end stages of their lives. Once upon a time, my tireless mom fixed all the meals, three meals a day, at least for the 18 years of my life. There is a free, free meal. Throughout college, Going home meant a table preferred for me with my favorite dishes, prepared even if it was during her 70-hour work week. After I married, she extended that table for Ben and then her granddaughters, introducing them to all my favorite foods. My favorite food cooked by my mom is kimchi jjigae. Kimchi jjigae, of course, which is made by my mom. We have a saying in Korean that the best foods have the person's sonmat. Sonmat means literally taste of one's hands. What makes my mom's kimchi and her kimchi jjigae best is literally that it is made by her hands. It is the taste of her hands. And the best cooks, some of us would say, are our ammas, mamas, both because of their labor-intensive taste of their hands and also their heart, spirit, and love. I can say that my mom makes the best kimchi and kimchi jjigae, which is cooked kimchi, and not just me, but probably the thousands of parishioners that ate her kimchi at the home church that I grew up in. My favorite memory of my mom is that she would buy boxes of Napa cabbage on sale in the season, radishes, green onions, ginger, garlic, red pepper, some of the essential ingredients, and I would help her chop and cut for hours. We would talk, laugh, and mix the batches, often getting red pepper all over my chin and cheeks as I was her taste tester. You have to taste it along the way. The memory reminds me both how purposeful the making of the kimchi felt as it would be served at every meal, and also what a play, play, playful time it was for us. A whole day set apart for a different kind of laboring from the usual work. My mom is not only a good kimchi maker, she is also a really good teacher, very patient. Her patience is probably her best gift. My time with her, not just in kimchi making, but at other times in which she was offering herself. She was providing for us with not only what we needed to eat, but with her love, her nourishing love. And Korean, and you would understand that kimchi is on every table at every meal. I guess you can say for Koreans, rice is like bread, and rice always comes with kimchi. So kimchi is essentially like bread. 
I will not be making kimchi with my mom this coming week. It's been actually decades since we've done that together. But the memory of how we made kimchi together will be my food, bread for this part of our journey as we share meals in the coming week. Making kimchi satisfy some hunger in me as a child, and I know as a mother myself now that it satisfies some hunger in my mom. This week we will eat together and not just food, but as our readings invite us to do, we will eat life itself. Not just any life, but we will be remembering to eat the life of Jesus, that life Jesus offers us. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. The I am, the present tense, here and now. What does it mean to eat life, eternal life? What does it actually mean for us? What does it mean to eat Jesus? What does it mean to eat life in the here and now? What does it mean to eat not only my mom's food, but to eat my mom's life, her life that is mortal? What does it mean for us to eat life, mine, ours, one another's life? What does Jesus' life taste like? Is it sweet like honey? Better, bitter like the dregs at the bottom? Bittersweet like good quality chocolate? Is it moldy, the last possible morsel, like the kind shared at concentration camps? Is it days old or less than 24 hours old, like the kind we deliver from Panera Bread? Is it sour and spicy like ripe fermented kimchi? Is it comforting like kimchi jjigae? that's been cooked with the taste of one's mom's hands. Maybe what we hunger for most is the love of one another in the midst of life, all of life, even in the midst of uncertainty and death. I know what I hunger for now, and as I share with mom this coming week, I hunger for the presence of the risen Christ, that says, peace be with you. And that my mom and our family would taste and see and touch and understand that mystery, abundant life, eternal life, what do you call it, as they say in Hebrew, manna in the wilderness, the provision of God, the gift of God, gift of grace, gift of faith, gift of love, that is given for each of us. In today's readings, we are asked to eat, to chew, and in our case of these prepackaged, hard little bread, don't crack your teeth on it, Jesus' description as the bread of life, or the bread which comes from heaven, we watched last week, he fed 5,000 people, and with leftovers even, we listen as their scarcity mindset drives them to pursue more bread, dough. I think uh, our language today is literally money. More from where it came from in today's readings in John. And we hear his words to the grasping crowds challenging them to probe the hungers beneath their hungers. What is the real hunger of their hearts, our hearts? What is at the gut of this hunger, Jesus invites us to eat him, the bread that will make us never hungry, never thirsty again. Jesus invites us into relationship of intimacy and communion. Jesus tended to the crowd's hunger, their body's hunger matter, their need for food, and he also shepherds the people to look into their hungry hearts for the quenching of their thirst, for what drives them into pursuing him, into his presence. What are their hungers that only bread of heaven can satisfy? What are some of our hungers? Getting back to normal, security, health, freedom, 
equality, equity, belonging, meaning, purposefulness, fullness, a good night's sleep, a critical mass to be vaccinated, being understood, contentment, housing, beauty, well-being, mercy, redemption, healing, freedom from addiction, love, attention, presence, being seen and heard, respect, joy, rest, peace, a gold medal, self-worth, permission to be our different selves, acceptance, money for rent, hope, protection, clean air, a trip to space, compassion. What would you add to this list? For what do you hunger? Friendship, love, for what do you hunger? And having named some of these hungers, do we trust that Jesus will satisfy them? After all, we're so good at finding substitutes for communion with God. Do we really trust that Jesus is our bread, our dough, our security? Is Jesus the essential, the only necessary element to our life? Is Jesus provision, food, daily bread that not only feeds our bodies, but feeds us so that we hunger and thirst no more? Jesus welcomes us with all our need and hunger to the feast today. Jesus invites us to eat him the rain of bread of heaven that both fills our hunger and quenches our thirst and to become what we eat. Jesus gives us his abundant life. We eat today accepting the words, the body of Christ given for you, for your hunger, for your thirst. Apostle Paul spent three intimate years of his life laboring in love in ministries with the community in Ephesus, and he commends the people in the letter we read today to live worthy of your calling. And we are reminded of God's own powers at work within us, able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. We gather today to remember as we receive the body of Christ, rain of bread from heaven, and can we just pause here? Because being new to Seattle and experience our rain last season, these words gives me a new visual image. Rain of bread of heaven, from heaven. Just imagine it, the image. Rain of bread of heaven, feeding us, quenching us, till we want no more in case we forget who we are and whose we are. We are God's beloveds for whom God would offer God's own flesh and blood, God's own life in Christ, in order for us to live and have the life, life abundantly. And in case we get lost in anxieties and fears of the scarcity mentality, we gather to remember and celebrate that it's not always about more bread for us, but how we are the bread for our siblings and for our world. We come to eat Jesus, I am the bread of heaven, present, presence of Jesus, so that we remember to be living also present, presence, here now as the life, the bread, blessed, the life, bread, that is broken, the life, bread, that is given to ourselves, to each other, to our world. I've heard it said that one can say more about a community by seeing how it treats those less than, for example, those who are hungry amongst them. As we, the rain, bread of heaven, in the present tense, how are we to all who hunger? In this time, in this pandemic, it's important that we remember the present tense of Jesus who says, I am. I am the bread of life, not a couple thousand years ago, but today, in this pandemic, in this 2021. 
he tastes like more than enough. What does life that is more than enough taste, look, feel, sound like? For today's Holy Communion, our first in person since the lockdown last March, Ben and Sam baked us this bread. It is symbolic of sonmat, of God's sonmat, hands of God, of the spirit and love of God's hands, God's body, God's love, God's life in Jesus for our community. We also have these individually packaged elements lovingly prepared and individually packaged with Karen's sonmat, taste of hands. We are surrounded by sonmat, taste of hands, taste of life at this table. Symbolically, this bread is braided and tied at the end into a circular, never-ending body. In Revelations of Divine Love, Julian of Norwich plays with the image of being knitted together and develops it into this idea of oneing, O-N-E-I-N-G. Knit two hands together like this, fit it together as symbol of oneing. A way to describe the union between God and all souls. She writes, this beloved soul was preciously knit to God in its making by a knot so subtle and so mighty that it is one in God. In this oneing, it is made endlessly holy. Furthermore, God wants us to know that all souls which will be saved in heaven without end are knitted in this knot and one in this oneing and made holy in the holiness. We are presently literally able to eat and share this one bread together in this pandemic. And still we are being eternally being one, knit together, everlasting, infinite, as we partake in the present tense, presence of Jesus with us as we partake these individual elements at home, online, here outside. We also partake with the hope that this present moment becomes our future, that day in which we will break this oneing together in person, face to face, maskless, seeing, tasting, touching, nor knowing more perfectly that which only we see, taste, touch, know, like in a mirror, dimly. In the meantime, let us mature into the fullness, the full stature, and the life of Christ with patience, gentleness, bearing with one another in love. We are reminded to live a life worthy of this marvelous calling we receive and to bear witness to the loving God who poured out an immeasurable love on us, intending for us to be whole, and holy through the power of God's love. The feast is before us. We need to come to the table because in life we forget so much. Come hungering, come thirsting to remember and to be remembered. Come to be fed alongside our siblings, our families, our friends, strangers, and even enemies beside us, as well as those who are not present at the table. We are reminded, live lives worthy of this marvelous calling we have received. Bear witness to God, that rain of heaven poured out immeasurable upon us. We are intended to be whole, holy, through the power of God's love. May we become what we eat, what we ingest, Become the life of Jesus, the life of the world. May it be so. Amen.
We are forgiven, restored, and sustained. Peace I give you, said Jesus. Now let us share this extravagant gift of peace with each other. You are invited to share peace with signs like your hands over your heart and opening your hands as you make eye contact and smile with your eyes. And for folks online, we can also use the peace sign in the comments. Peace be with you. And also with you. And now let us share in the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for ourselves and each other this morning. We pray and hold in our hearts Dorothy and Bud's grandson, Keegan's wife, Kendra's parents, as they fear for their home in Nevada and as they navigate their present moment as evacuees. With them and for all in the wildfire's way, we pray for mercy and ask for your present protection. You are life and into your life we pray. We pray for all working so tirelessly and sacrificially for the work of their hands, for the good and the safety of those in harm's way, trusting it is for the wellness of the whole. We also rejoice with the music ministries with Lazy F String Academy here with us this past week. We pray over all the students, staff, and our supportive volunteers that love bears its own fruit and music pleasant to your ears, O oh God. We also pray for your compassionate hand on David's childhood friend Michael's life as he grieves the tragedy of his son Matthew's life taken by despair. We trust in your mercies beyond measure and into your grace beyond measure. We also pray, O oh God, for your life. Feed Kate and Roger's nephew Riley with your own life 
O Christ. Riley is in need of a kidney transplant. In the midst of changes and living with so much uncertainties and unknowns through this pandemic, we ask that you help us to learn humility, gentleness, and patience so that we may support each other in love. In times when fear or differences become less and less tolerated and tolerating, we thank you for our differences and ask we grow in celebrating our differences. May we recognize the gifts that others bring as well as our own skills, abilities, and gifts so that together we build a generous committee, community that reflects your love. Amen. And now let us share in the prayer that Jesus taught us himself. Our God who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is our compassionate shepherd's table. All are welcome here. All sheep are sheep of one fold, all means all. You need not be baptized, need not be of certain age, need not be a member here at Aldersgate, need not be a United Methodist. Those things are not what makes us worthy. What makes us worthy is God who loves us no matter what and revealed to us that no matter what the world says about our worthiness, no matter what, not even death, could separate us from being God's beloved. It is God who invites us to these green pastures. It is God who feeds us. It is God who makes our cup to overflow. It is God who invites us. Come, let us receive God's life. Let us eat Jesus. Behold what you are. Become what you receive. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, people of God. Let us give thanks to God who loves us. Our greatest joy is to offer you our thanks and praise, creator, grace giver, healer of our brokenness. All that is beautiful was created for our eyes. All that is wonderful was created for our all. For that majestic was created for our praise. For all that is mystery was created for our silence. But despite everything you have given us, we are not satisfied. Believing life is about our appetites. We choose the scarcity mentality of the world. Nor knowing our only hope is from you, we continue to rebel. Called to live in unity with one another, we cling to all that which divides us. Yet you refuse to let us go, sending your only son, Jesus, to call us to life in you. We have fallen and you lifted us up we have forsaken you and you redeemed us. We are broken and yet you make us whole. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices here and now and with the faithful in every time and every place, singing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy are you, God of every mercy. All creation praises unity and compassion. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who gives us Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, God of grace and tenderness, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, the Holy One. Though we look for him, though we look for him for all the wrong reasons, he holds out the bread of life to us. Though we offer the cross to him, he graces us with life.
though we thirst for more and more, he offers us the cup of salvation. Though we gossip and slander one another, he speaks the truth and love to us. Though we would divide each other by class, race, or condition, he calls us to oneness in you. Recalling your steadfast love in Christ, and knowing we cannot understand your grace until that eternal day when we can know your heart, we take this bread and this cup, praising and blessing you for these gifts of hope and joy. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ died, a seeming prisoner of death. Christ was raised so all might be freed in resurrection love. Christ will return, finishing the work of God. Holy God of truth, though we come to your table as many, may your Holy Spirit make us one body, one spirit, as you feed us with the bread of life. May we feed those who know true hunger, as your justice illumines our heart's darkness. May we be a beacon to the oppressed and lost, as you speak to us the truth and love, may we be a voice for the powerless and forgotten. As you restore us to wholeness, may we bind up our shattered world. Through Christ who saved us, all glory and honor are yours, God, who created us in your own image through the Holy Spirit in the midst, making us your people now and forever. Amen. We invite our online friends to partake with Sam and myself at this time. Our in-person friends here today are invited to come outside and receive these individually wrapped elements. And we will make a circle outside and be physically distanced and sing and praise God with thanksgiving. We will be led to partake outside together by Patty and Roger. The rain of bread from heaven given for you. The cup of love that binds us as one. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Sam. The love of Christ poured out for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ poured out for you. Amen. And let us share in the prayer of dedication. It's part of our thanksgiving.
Together, we are the body of Christ in this worship. We join others to become the body of Christ in the wider world. Christ, walk with us so that we may grow, mature, and do your work. Let us go in peace. Amen. I invite you to come to the green pastures outside.